regular session of the Kettering Board of Education. Today is April the 5th, 2022. We are in the recital hall. It is uh, 6 p.m. Before we dive into the agenda, just a recognition of the mission of the school district, which is uh, the mission of the Kettering City Schools in partnership with the family and community is to guarantee a superior educational learning experience for all students by providing a positive and innovative learning environment while responsibly utilizing uh, resources. Mr. Furness, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Ambrose? Here. Mr. Henderson? Here. Mrs. Kane? Here. Mr. Martin? Here. Mrs. Parks? Here. Item number two on our agenda is adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion? I move to adopt the agenda as it's been presented. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Furness, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Ambrose? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Parks? Yes. Thank you. Uh, if you are able, will you please join us standing in uh, the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda we are the minutes of the March 22nd uh, regular session. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the minutes of the March 22nd, 2022 regular session. I will second that. Right. Any discussion about the minutes? Hearing none, Mr. Furness, call the roll, please. Mr. Ambrose? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Parks? Yes. Thank you. Next item is uh, board committee reports. Ms. Kane, I understand you've got something to yes, share. Yes, I wanted to update everybody on the Roush Hall of Fame. You're all probably wondering what's happening with Roush Hall of Fame. Uh, in years past, applications have been uh, due mid-March, and uh, the ceremony to recognize the honorees happened in mid-May. And I'll tell you, it's a really, really hectic time of year. Last year, because of COVID, we pushed the ceremony to the end of August and it worked out really well. So we wanna make some changes to the timing of Roush Hall of Fame. Uh, in the next few weeks, I'm going to be meeting with Carrie Basson to look at the calendar and to, and to determine um, the deadline for applications as well as when that ceremony might take place. Uh, we are looking at the fall again, like we had last year. In the meantime, we are accepting applications. Um, we want to take advantage of the slower summer months, so we're looking forward to a lot of applicants, um, and or no, uh, nominations, I should say. Um, uh, and there are so many deserving um, educators um, that really could, would be, it would just be so great to honor them with the Rush Hall of Fame. I wanted to remind everybody what the format is for applications um, and nominations. If you go to our website, www.ketteringschools.org, up at the top of the page, there's a, a link to, or a button to push for district forms and links. Uh, click on that tab and then go to the links column. Uh, the online format, the online nomination is fairly easy. We're trying to make it as simple as possible um, to navigate, but as always, if anybody has any questions or concerns with navigating that online nomination form, please feel free to contact our community relations uh, department. And there will be more details to come once Carrie and I um, have a meeting on this and determine when the new uh, deadline for nominations will be and when the um, ceremony will take place this fall. Thank you. Anyone else have any updates on committee reports? All right, next item on the agenda is uh, items for upcoming meetings. And my apologies, my computer is still loading, so I don't have the next three meetings in front of me. Does anybody else have yeah. the three meetings up, please? Oh, I was going to print these for you, Mr. <laughs> Henderson. Here, Here they are. You. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> so the next three meetings, uh, the next is April the 26th, 2022. It will be a regular meeting here in the recital hall. 
agenda items will include certainly personnel items. Followed by May 3rd, 2022 at 6 p.m. also a regular meeting here in the recital hall. And the agenda will include some personnel items. And then the, the third meeting will be May 17th, 2022. Again, 6 p.m., a regular meeting here in the recital hall. And we will uh, take up personnel items on the agenda. I did, thank you. I did skip an item on the agenda, which is hearing of the public regarding agenda items. Uh, there is none. Uh, and so we can dispose of that particular agenda item. Jumping down to item number eight, uh, decisions of the board. I'm not aware of any uh, for approval tonight. So we can move on from that item number. Uh, next item on the agenda is item number nine, the human capital agenda. Uh, is there a motion? Yes, I have a motion to accept the human capital agenda, <clears throat> excluding items 10P, and I move for approval. Second. All right. Any discussion? Mr. Furnace, call the roll, please. Mr. Ambrose? Abstain. Mr. Henderson? Uh, I'll vote yes. Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Parks? Yes. Uh, the item that was moved off the agenda, which is 10P, Mr. Martin, I will turn that over to you uh, for your disposition, please. Do we have a motion? 9P. 9P, thank 9P. you. I have a motion in it uh, to accept the human capital agenda with uh, the item 9P only. Second. Mr. Furnace, will you take the roll? Mr. Ambrose? Abstain. Mr. Henderson? Abstain. Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Parks? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Martin. Next agenda item is the business services agenda. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the business services agenda as presented. Second. Uh, Mr. Miller, do you have any, any observations relating to the business services agenda you want to share? Not to the business services agenda. And I'll, I'll come back. I skipped okay. that item you wanted to No, talk about, I just so. asked that we approve the business services agenda as written. Very good. Any discussions? Mr. Furnace, call the roll, please. Mr. Ambrose? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Parks? Yes. All right, back on the uh, human capital agenda, uh, Mr. Miller, there was something you wanted to share with the board or a recognition you wanted to make, please. Yes, members of the board, thank you with that vote. I'd like to take a moment and introduce our new director of business services, Mr. Jeff Johnson, who is with his wife, Deanne, of 27 years. Jeff brings 20 years of educational leadership to this position, having served in two other districts as director of business services, Director of Human Resources. Jeff will be leaving his current positions of Supervisor of Building and Grounds. We're very excited to have Jeff, so please welcome Jeff and his wife, Deanne. Congratulations. Yes, thank Congratulations. you. Thank you. Next agenda item is hearing of the public. Uh, I do have a form here. There's a, an Andy Wilson. Mr. Wilson, will you come up to the podium? Mr. Wilson, I'm not sure if you've uh, shared thoughts at the board meetings before, but our, our procedure is you've got five minutes. Uh, share with us uh, your observations. Uh, we're certainly interested in what you have to say and we'll listen. Uh, it's the custom of the board not necessarily to respond or react to what you have to say. Uh, and I think that maybe if there's a timer up there. You'll see the timer above my head there. It's typically pretty large and so, uh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Wilson. Start out by telling us who you are and where you live, please, and then share your thoughts. Okay. Good evening. I'm Andrew Wilson. I'm a former board member of the Fairborn City Schools, and I serve on the steering committee of the Ohio Coalition of Equity and Adequacy of School Funding. I live at 442 Zimmer Drive in Fairborn. And tonight I'm here to talk about the impact that the expanded Ed Choice Voucher Program uh, potentially has on Kettering Schools. Uh, the, uh, as information, the uh, Coalition for Equity and Adequacy of School Funding is one of the lead plaintiffs on the lawsuit that was filed January 4th for injunctive relief on the Ed Choice Voucher Program. Many of the proponents of vouchers say the money should follow the student. 
However, it is not the same amount of money your district receives from the state. The state funding formula for public schools is very complicated, and each district receives a different amount of money for each of their students. The average state funding at Kettering is approximately $3,368 per student for every grade level. The remaining approximately $9,500 required to educate your students comes from local property taxes. This information is from the Ohio Department of Education District Profile Report, or CUP Report. The EdChoice Voucher Program provides $5,500 for K through, a student, K through 8 students and $7,500 for grades 9 through 12. This is a $1,500 per student increase while public schools receive $45 per year. What is the difference in Kettering? Your state funding total for just over 7,600 students is $25.7 million. If you were funded at the same level as the EdChoice vouchers, the total you would receive is $46.7 million, an increase of $21 million per year. This is the 13th highest amount in over 600 districts in the state and the second highest in Montgomery County. Why isn't this money following your students? It would be an interesting question to pose to Senator Antani and Representative White. You can join as a participating district in the lawsuit that was filed January 4th for $2 per student. This is approximately $15,200 per year. Westerville in the Columbus area, which is similar demographically to Kettering, uh, has joined. Please, it, please give this your consideration. Passing a resolution of joinder and sending it, it and your payment to the Ohio Coalition for Equity and Adequacy of School Funding is all that is required. Fairborn has been a party for two years, and that has been our only involvement of district and board personnel. It's not a burden on anybody to do this. It's just to help fund the lawsuit and the attorney's fees and everything else. And as an aside, because apparently I still have a few more minutes, or a few time, a few sec minutes here, um, I have a personal uh, feeling on this, and it revolves around Article 1, Section 7 of the Ohio Constitution, which states, no person shall be compelled to attend, erect, or support any place of worship or maintain any form of worship against his consent. And I do not consent to having my state tax dollars given to parochial schools in supporting those places of worship. Thank you for allowing me to enlighten you and whoever may be listening. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right, with that, that brings us to the next agenda item, which is item number seven, uh, which is an executive session. Uh, and uh, I will move that we enter into the executive session for the purpose of consideration of the appointment, employment, promotion, or compensation of a public employee or an official. Is there a second? No. Second. Mr. Furness, call the roll, please. Mr. Ambrose. It should be flat at this item 12, not yes. seven. He's never taken Latin, so he doesn't know his numbers very well. I don't see very well, that's Mr. Ambrose. That's why I'm here for to help him Thank out. you. You're keeping me straight. I appreciate it. <laughs> the answer is yes, though. Thank you, sir. You are. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mrs. Kane? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Parks? Yes. Time in is 614. Thank you. And following the conclusion of the executive session, we will not be returning to conduct any business. Thank you, everyone.